Charlie Hawk with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hal Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Indian companion Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Dan Reed was the only passenger who left the stage at Mud Flat. He looked around as if he expected someone to meet him. He saw no one but the men on the stage and the thin-faced boy, smaller than himself, who staggered beneath the weight of the mail sack that was handed down. Hey, you got it, Rand? Yep, I got it. <laughs> Heavy load of mail this trip. It's catalog time. Is that all you got for us, Jim? Well, that's all, Rand. Give my regards to folks. Sure will. So long. Goodbye. Yep, Dan. Say, let me give you a hand with that sack of mail. Huh? Oh, sure. Sort of hard to handle. I'll take this, then. Where does it go? This way, right inside Pa's store. You run the post office? Oh, not me, no siree. My Pa runs it. I just hop out when he's not around. You won't catch me running no store when I grow up. I want to be a lawman. Oh, that'll be fine. Put the sack right here in the corner. Oh, thanks for helping me. That's all right, Rance. I'm glad I was handy. Hey, you know my name. I heard the driver speak to you. Oh, that's it. Say, I bet I know your name. You do? Not just your first name, either. You're Dan Reed. Am I right? How'd you know that? See? I'll make a first-rate detective. How'd you know my name? There was an Indian in here a couple days ago. Where is he now? Well, he said he couldn't wait to meet you. He told me what you look like and left a note for you. Oh, that's it. I got the note right here. Here you are. Thanks. I wondered where Tana was. Is that the Indian's name? Uh Uh-huh. Can he read and write? Mm Mm-hmm. He didn't write this, though. Another friend of mine wrote it. Golly. I think that an Indian can read and write. Rance, how far is it to Polkville? Polkville? Great guns. You don't want to go there, do you? Yes. How can I get there? Well, if you got to go, there's a stage. It's not the regular stage line, just a little outfit. And does it run every day? Oh, gosh, no. Once a week is all. You have to wait three days for the stage. Three days? Well, there's nothing in Polkville except the stage station. And can I rent a horse? Not for the trip to Polkville. No one will rent a horse for that trip. It's too tough. It's open country and it's covered with alkali sand and hot as a bake oven. Mighty hard on horses. How long would it take to walk? Walk? You local, you couldn't make it. Heat would get you. The only thing you can do is wait for the stage. My pa will put you up and it won't cost you a cent. Oh, but I want to get there before. Uh, what do you have to go there for? To meet my friends. They work for the stage line? No. Then what are they doing in Polkville? <laughs> Ranch, you sure can ask questions. Well, that's how lawmen get facts. If you were a lawman right now, you might be able to solve a mystery. Yeah? How's that? 
two weeks ago when the stage came into Polkville, both the guard and the driver were dead. Great. Dead? Who killed them? No one knows. They don't even know what killed them. But that's not all. Well, what's the rest? When the stage came in here last week, another guard and driver were dead. Chomp on Jupiter. That's a mystery. Hey, what do your friends got to do with it? I don't know, Rance. I'm anxious to get to Pokeville so as I can find out. Rance's interest was aroused by Dan Reed's story about the mysterious murders on the stage that made the short run between Mud Flats and Pokeville. He questioned Dan further, but soon decided that Dan had told the truth when he said he didn't know how or by whom the stage drivers had been killed. After getting Dan settled for the night, Rance made the excuse that he had more chores to do before going to bed. He waited until Dan was asleep, then going to the stable behind his father's store, he saddled a rather nondescript-looking horse, and his hands shook with tense excitement as he followed the plan that he'd decided upon. This was the chance he'd been waiting for, and he wanted nothing to spoil it. Finally, the horse was ready. Ranch led him quietly a short distance from the stable, then, believing that no one in his father's place could hear the hoof beats, he mounted and set out to Pokeville and adventure. Get out, boy! Get out! It was the following afternoon in the small, hot town of Pokeville when the deputy marshal sat in the office of Ben Sawtell, operator of the stage line. You say that mail has been taken from the stage? I'm sure of it, Marshal. Someone stopped the stage, went through the mail real careful, and took out what letters was wanted. Does uh, much mail come over your line? Yeah, it's considerable. We carried from mud flats on the main line, and it's picked up here by the Butterfield route. And you think these men were killed to give the murderer a chance to take out the mail that looked as if it held money? That's what I think. But how were they killed? That's the big mystery. There wasn't a mark on them. No sign of a wound of any sort. Horses brought in the stage with two dead men on the box. Guard and the driver. So tell, who's that raining up outside? I don't know. Skinny looking kid, ain't he? So is that stove in horse. Mr. Sawtell? That's my name. I guess you're the one I want to talk to. Well, let's have it, son. Where'd you come from? Mud Flats. On that horse? Oh, he's not much to look at, but he's hard as nails. And I've never been up to Mud Flats, but the drivers tell me it's a bad trail. Well, it sure is. Especially if you missed the water hole like I did. Come all that way without water? Oh, I had a canteen. <laughs> no wonder you look parched. What's your name? Oh, just call me Joe. What's yours? Me? I'm Marshal Bear. A Marshal? Golly. Say, you got a friend by the name of Dan Reed? Never heard of him. Why? Oh, I just thought you might be a friend of his, that's all. Uh, you didn't come here for your health, Joe. What are you after? A job. What kind of a job? I'm a stage driver. You? A stage driver? <laughs> if you're a stage driver, I'm a full-blooded Cherokee Indian. <laughs> when you get to laughing, we can go on talking. Well, in this hotel, the kid's downright serious about it. How old are you, Joe? What's that got to do with it? <laughs> you look to be about 16. Well, I'm small for my age. Mm-hmm, and skinny. Well, just the same, I can handle a six in hand. Give me a chance, Mr. Sawtell. That's all I want. I'll bring the horses through. And I won't be a corpse with a dead guard beside me. What's that? Why'd you say that? You've had some mysterious deaths, haven't you? How do you know about him? Just happened to hear about him, that's all. What'd you say your name was? I said you could call me Joe. Do I get a job, Mr. Sawtell? No. Oh, I gotta stay around here. My horse can't go any farther. Well, then stay around. Don't ask for a driving job. Well, how'd it be if I swept up the place? It sure needs it. All right, sweep up the place. Brooms around somewhere. Maybe when all the other drivers get killed off, you'll give me a chance. Joe? Yes, sir? Do you know anything about those deaths? Well, I... Speak up. Oh, no, sir. I guess I don't. That is not yet. Not yet? What do you mean? Oh, maybe I'll have something to say later on. Oh, all right. And uh, if you learn anything, you'll uh, tell us, won't you? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll get to that floor sweeping job. Ben? I wonder if that towhead knows anything. I don't know. Step outside, is he? For what? Come on, I've got an idea. Whatever you say. You find the broom? Yes, sir, I've got it. Yeah, look at the horse that youngster rode from one flat. 
Why do you want to step outside? Come around here at the side window. Right. That boy was powerful anxious to get a job here. We take a sneak look through the window and see if he tends to his sweeping or does something else. Mm. We can see from here. Well, look. He stopped sweeping. The minute my back was turned. He's at your desk, Ben. Doggone. Going through papers and things. That young sprout is up to something, Marshal. I wonder if he's in any way connected with the murders. Well, they attend to when he's holding back some kind of information. And I wouldn't take that bet. What's that book he's summoning? A payroll book. Now, why in tarnation is he interested in that? Have you noted the men that were killed? Well, yeah. Which of you is in What the? Hey, Mast. Steady. Who are you? I don't slap leather. I was just about to ask which of you ran the office. Who are you? Answer up. It's the law talking. Oh, and you must be Ben Sautel. I am. And this is Marshal Baird. He's here to find the answer to four murders. Now start looking for the answer by questioning you. My advice to you is this. Hand over those guns. I didn't come here to surrender, Marshal. Six men have held guns on me. They're dead. I am not. Oh, fast on the jaw. Do you make it a practice to peek through windows? You're going to surrender? By no means. I came only to find out when the next stage is due to arrive from Mud Flats. That's just about what I figured. You want to get another guard and another driver and some more mail. Why, you murdering thief, I will do. Now, when do you expect the next stage? Have you got the nerve to think I'll answer that? What do you know about the boy that came here? What boy? So you know about him, eh? What do you know about that towhead? Towhead? You know what I'm talking about. No, Sartell, I don't. I think we have different boys in mind. What do you mean? I'm expecting a boy on the next stage, but he's dark-haired. Now, will you tell me when the stage is due or force me to go inside and see your schedule? You try don't to go... Don't do what you're thinking about, Marshal. You... Just leave your gun where it is. Sure. I'll leave it where it is. I won't have to take any risks. The man who's coming up behind you will take care of you. <laughs> I'm supposed to turn and look, huh? I don't care whether you're doing or not. It doesn't matter. Take him, Murgo. Right. Uh, uh, got him. Got him. I got him. Uh, Ten, grab his gun. Help me hold him. He won't let go. Uh, not yet. Uh, strong as an ox. Hang on to that hand. Right. I can. Only three of you. Look out. Uh, yes. oh, Marco. Two of you, huh? Ben, get his gun. Club him. Well, I'm trying to. Watch that right. Uh, yes. No. Oh. Now, it's you and me. I'll fix you. And I'll take your gun. Here, Silver. I'll get you, you killer. I warned you about name calling. Uh, 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 oh, Silver. Oh, my jaw. Golly, he sure clipped you, Marshal. Oh, you. I saw most of the row. Why don't you stand there? Why don't you do something? Well, there didn't seem to be much I could do. You had him three against one. Oh, uh, wake up, Sotel. What is it? Wake up. We got to get after that masked man. Masked man? Well, where is he? How'd he get away? Don't waste time with questions. Oh, uh, what? What'd he hit me with? Oh, Merkel, you worthless idiot. You had the chance to nail that critter from behind. Well, I, I've done my best, Mr. Sawyer. Ah, uh, you handled him as sloppy as you handle the reins of a stage team. We should have had that masked man. We'll get him, and we'll clear up those four murders. Now we know who we're looking for. I'll swear in every man in town. We'll have our killer before nightfall. <laughs> curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. Marshal Beard, Sawtell, and Merkel sat in the office of the stage lines. 
with just a few minutes after the Lone Ranger's escape. You had a gun, Marshal. Why in thunder didn't you shoot that masked man when Merkel grabbed him from behind? How could I shoot him? I didn't have anything against him. Said yourself he was probably behind the murder. The law can't shoot a man on suspicion. I sure thought we had him. We did. We haven't got him now. Where did you come from, Merkel? I was in the cafe. I come up and saw the masked man holding a gun on you in Sawtell, so I grabbed him. Merkel's one of my drivers. Been with me for two years. Oh. What are your plans, Marshal? Going to set a posse after that masked man? You bet I am. But first, I'm going to question that boy. Hey, you. Come out of that corner and answer a few questions. Do the best I can, Marshal. Why are you here? Well, I told you I came to try to get a job driving a stage, that's all. Then why be a snooping over things on Sawtell's desk? Me? We saw you through the window. You were looking through my payroll book. Oh, why? Well, no particular reason, Mr. Sawtell. I guess I was just curious. What's your connection with that masked man? I never saw him before. Don't lie. Well, I'm not. When he heard there was a boy here, he was mighty surprised. Well, I don't know why he should have been. Listen, Toehead. You know something about the murders on the stage line. What do you know? I got nothing to say. Why, well, you... Go ahead. Do what you want. I won't talk. Uh, stubborn, youngster. Sounds like he means it. You bet I mean it. Hey, look, Marshal, do you mind if I make a suggestion? Go ahead, Merkel. I'll send the boy outside first. Go on outside, but stay where we can watch you through the open door. Stand over by the hitch rail. And don't bend your ears to try and hear what we say. Yes, sir. Mr. Sawtell, I, uh, I don't know how you'll take to this idea. Yeah, let's hear it, Merkel. Well, I'm scheduled to drive the stage to Mud Flats this week. Yeah, I know. You're mighty short-handed after losing four men. What about it? You're especially short of guards. Now, suppose I go on the box as guard and let that boy handle the reins. Oh, he's not big enough. Oh, shucks, the horses can make that run without a driver. What's well, back of your idea, Merkel? The boy knows something. I'm sure of it. He's a stubborn type. You can't make him talk. So my idea is this. Riding the stage alongside him, I can get friendly. Maybe I can get him to open up. That makes sense to me. Yeah, me too. It's a good idea. You uh, afraid of the trip, Merkel? <laughs> me? No, sir. I'll be on guard. I'd like to meet the murderer and find out how he kills our men without leaving a trace. Sure is mysterious. Give me a chance to get acquainted with the kid, Mr. Sawtell. I'll learn something. All right, Merkel. In the meantime, Marshal Barry will get men to look out for that masked man. It was after dark when the Tahoe rode into the Lone Ranger's well-concealed camp. Oh, Scott, oh, fella, oh. How are things in Postville? Plenty men out looking for you. Tata, did you find out when the stage leaves for Mud Flats? Ah, uh, it goes tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. That's when it leaves Pokeville. Ah, uh, it takes twelve hours for trip. Then it arrives in Mud Flats tomorrow night. When does it start back? You know. Next morning, nine o'clock. That's when Dan will leave the flats. Ah, uh, uh, we'll be ready to start at nine in the morning. We keep the stage in sight and see if anything happens. Ah, uh, and the next day we'll watch it on the return trip. Uh, maybe better me go alone. Plenty men look for you. We'll dodge the marshal's men. I don't want anything to happen while Dan's on the stage. Uh, maybe Dan not on stage. How's that? Maybe him not get letter you right. You left it in the mudflat store, didn't you? That right. But boy in store, not there now. Him in Pokeville. He is? Ah. Him in stagecoach office. Me see him. So he's the one. Oh, uh, did you talk to him? Well, me not get chance. Other fellow with him. Maybe talk by and by. We've got to see him. We've got to know whether or not Dan got our message. Uh, him makes bunk and shed next to the stage office. I'll get to him tonight. Rance had turned in on a bunk that Ben Sartell fixed up in a vacant shed. He couldn't sleep. He lay wide awake, thinking of driving the six in hand. Presently, he saw a shadow at the open window. He heard a voice. Rance. Huh? Who's that? I'll come to the window. I want to talk to you. Yeah, sure. <coughs> Gosh, you're the masked man. How'd you know my name? Tonto knew you were here. Tonto? Is he a friend of yours? Quiet, quiet. Keep your voice down. Did you uh, see Dan Reed? Yeah, he got your note. Golly, I saw you lay out those three men. How'd you do it? Ranch, why did you come to Pokeville? Well, well, all right, I can talk to you. You're all right if you're Dan's friend. The marshal thinks you're the killer, but I know different. Why are you here? Because I'm trying to find the killer. I've got a clue. You have? I want to be a lawman, so I practice by noticing things. A man with a beard kept coming to Pa's store to buy some poison. He said he used it to kill weeds on his farm. Yes? Every time he came in, I'd ask questions. He didn't know anything about farming. 
He wasn't a farmer. I wondered why he said he was and why he lied. Then I heard about the mysterious murder. Friends, good for you. Those men might have been poisoned. That's what I thought. I came here to see if I could find old Whiskers. I didn't dare talk to anyone. He might have partners. Are you working for Sawtell? Yeah. I'm going to handle the team tomorrow. You are? Sawtell's mighty short-handed. I'm driving. Wait. Someone's coming. You better scoot. If they catch you... I finished. We may meet in mud flats. Golly. Dan Reed's lucky to have a sidekick like that. Hey, Joe! Wake up! Let me in. Is that you, Mr. Merkel? Yeah, me and Mr. Sawtell. Gosh, is there something wrong? Oh, nothing new. You still want to handle that team? You bet I do. And get dressed. Now? We're going to change the schedule. The boss thinks we'll have a better chance to miss that murderer if we go to the flats tonight and return tomorrow instead of the next day. I'll be ready in a jiffy. Ranger and Tonto slept through the night unaware of the change in the stage schedule. They wakened at dawn. Tonto rode into town and soon returned with the startling news. Oh, Scott, oh, Tonto, oh, 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 What's the oh. matter, Tonto? Plenty, plenty wrong. Stage gone. Well, it was to start at nine. That's right. But plans changed last night. Stage left at midnight. At midnight? Ah, here, Silver. Get the saddle while I fix the blanket. <laughs> Here, Nick. Thanks. Steady, boy. Uh, Stage is probably in mud flats by this time. That's right. Teddy Silver. Easy now. May have already started back with Dan Reed on board. Easy. There. Come on, Tonto. Ready. Come on, Silver. Get him up. With Tonto close behind, the masked man set out at a furious pace. He raced through the town and passed the stage station. He saw the marshal, but made no effort to dodge. He dashed on, counting on the speed of silver to keep him out of the hands of the posse. Home, silver! Dan Reed was the only passenger on the trip from Mud Flats to Folkville. He rode in the high seat with Rance from the guard named Merkel. Any water left in your canteen, Dan? Not a drop, Rance. Sure is a dusty trip. I, I thought you said your name was Joe. Oh, I just gave that name, Mr. Merkel. All right, name's Rance. My pa runs a store and post office in Mud Flats. Oh, so, uh, so you're Jeb's boy. Uh-huh. I guess Pa's been in the store when you make a run. Yeah, I guess so. Why did you want a job on the stage? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Merkel. I think I've got a clue to the mysterious killer. Oh, you don't say so. I didn't want to tell anyone around Porkville till I sure they were trustworthy. I see. Well, <laughs> maybe you better not tell me. Oh, you're all right. I guess we're pretty good stage mates by this time. Well, what's your clue? Maybe Dan and I can help you dope things out. Well, I'll tell you. I figure those dead men were poisoned. Oh, you don't say. How'd you figure that? A critter with whiskers came into the store a couple times saying he was a farmer. I've thought about it a lot. Well, you're a pretty smart lad, Rams. I figured that the poison could be put in the water hole after the stage passed on the way to the flats. Why after it, Pat? Well, if the killer was after mail, he wouldn't want to knock off the garden driver before the mail was picked up. He'd wait until the return trip. And before another trip, the spring would purify itself. Sure. Oh, that water hose is all right. Better rain up. It's right ahead of us. You want us to stop? Sure. Whoa, whoa, boy. Whoa, whoa there. There we are. I don't want any of that water. I guess I don't either. Well, I'll get down and stretch my legs. I think the water's all right. Maybe I'll try it. Well, I could stand a stretch. I don't know why they make these things so high. Mr. Merkel, you drop. It's a false beard. Huh? Oh. Holy smoke. False whiskers. Merkel, you're the one. Smart boy. Now get off that stage. So that's it, huh, Merkel? You pull a gun and prove that you're the killer. Too bad you won't be able to tell the marshal about the rest of the proof that he can find at my house. Now get off that stage and be quick. We'd better do it, Rand. <coughs> now the whole thing's clear as day. You probably figured that if you finished the run a day early, it would account for you coming through alive. You'd have come through alive, too, if you hadn't been so smart. Now well, I've got to fix that water hole for you. Dan, that's the poison he bought from me. Well, you should know. Yeah, there you are. Drink up. Think we're local? Well, take your choice. A drink or a bullet? Go ahead and shoot. You can't make me drink that water. It don't matter to me. I'll give you three seconds to make up your mind. I don't need three seconds. How about you, Reed? A drink or a slug? Count me in with rants. Well, I'm sorry about this, boys. 
But I've got to let you have it or hang. And I don't aim to hang. You want to turn your back, Rand? Go on, you yellow pole cat. Shoot. All right. Look, help's coming. <laughs> That's an old trick. Make me turn so you can jump me, huh? Rance, even if he shoots us, he won't get away with it. The Lone Ranger's coming. Who? Hey, what the... In Tonto. Go on, right. fire that gun and see what happens. I thought I'll fire it right now. Oh! He nailed him. Jump him. I got him. I'm with you. I'm ready. I got his gun. You covered, Merkel. Oh, Silver, hold on. Oh. Look what we've got. There's the killer. Very big killer. Dan, are you all right? Sure thing. Oh, That's oh, the critter oh, I told you about. Oh, oh. There's the whiskers on the ground. Rance found out about him and he was going to shoot us. Can't he possibly come this way? Well, there's the marshal and Sartell. That's the town of Pofil was chasing us. Now, this is your prisoner, Rance. You hand him over to the marshal. Well, Dan was in on it. And you and Dan hand him over. We'll meet you in Pofil, Dan. But you don't have to... Pano and I'll keep going. I want to fight the marshal before he learns the truth. That'd be good. Golly, Dan, what a partner you've got. Look, here comes the marshal and Mr. Sawtell. I'm going to get out of here. No, you're not. I'm going to... Come on, Rand. I've got him. Here's the stake. What's this? Merkel and the two kids. Hey, Merkel, you can't lay over here. Get back on the box and head for Mutt Flat. The only place Merkel's heading for is jail. What's that? Come on, Dan. We haven't got time to palaver. Try to keep after that masked killer. You're wrong, Marshal. Merkel here's the killer, not the masked man. I got proof of it. What? Smart kid, ain't you? No, all the ants. Not all of them. But I'm smart enough to know you've been chasing the wrong man. He's the Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>